I had these drab old picture frames laying around my home and I decided to turn them into some new home decor. Hey there, it's Donna. Welcome to my channel. I'm happy to have you here. I've had this shadow box laying around my home for a good 20 years. It's in good shape, but it's pretty boring. So I decided to use this vintage effect wash from DecoArt in the color white. You apply it to your surface with a paintbrush and then you use a rag to wipe off the excess. As you can see, it creates a really nice bleached look to the wood. So I'm going to apply this wash to the frame of this shadow box as well as on the inside lip and I'm also going to go on the exterior of the box and on the interior of the box. The only place I'm not applying it is at the back side of the shadow box. I am going to be adding this beautiful scrapbook paper that I have. I'm using this piece of paper here as my template. It is the exact size that I need to fit inside of the shadow box. I'm also going to be adding this butterfly to the piece. So what I'm doing is just kind of figuring out where I'm going to be placing my butterfly so I can choose the pattern that I want to use on the back side of the shadow box. I'm just going to trace around the template with a pencil and then using a, a firm surface, I'm going to be using a steel ruler and a rotary cutter to cut around. Of course, feel free to use any type of cutting device that you have. So I ended up deciding to go with this one that's got the berries and I really like how the butterfly is situated on there. To apply the pipe paper to the back of the shadow box, I am using some Aileen's tacky glue. I apply some to the back and then using a plastic card, I spread it out evenly all over. Using a plastic card works great and it's bendable. so. It is really easy to get into all those little grooves and corners. So I slipped the paper into the slot that had the glass. And the beauty about using the wet glue is that you have some time to move your paper around. So then it is even inside your shadow box. I'm using a clean plastic car to smooth out the paper onto the surface. So as usual, I like to add a little bit of a natural decorative element whenever I can. So I had foraged these little branches and I decided to add some to the backdrop. I just thought it would be a really pretty touch. So I'm just laying them out, deciding where I want them. And then using some hot glue, I'm going to glue them into place once I am happy with how everything looks. I like to take the butterfly and just check to make sure that everything is situated nicely. And then if I need to trim any of the branches off like I am doing right here, now is the time to do it. So I wanted this butterfly to pop up and create a bit more of a dimensional look. So I like to use wood beads to help to rise pieces like this up. So I'm just gonna glue them on the back side of the butterfly and then What's nice about this is that they can work in around the twigs that we have in place. So you're going to have to just kind of move it around, manipulate the branches, pull any off that are not working for you until you have contact between the beads and your backdrop. I'm using some hot glue to adhere the butterfly. I'm starting off with the middle bead and then placing that in the center. And then next I will lift up one wing and add some hot glue then push it into place you may need to kind of push the twigs out of place a little bit as well just to make sure you've got some good adhesion and then i'll flip the other side up and do the same thing So there was one more step that I had forgotten to do, and that was to cover up that little side slit where our glass was. I'm just using a craft stick, a jumbo one, and I just figured out what length I needed and then I'm gonna trim off the excess, make sure it fits properly and trim off any more that's needed. 
and then I'm going to just use my hot glue and glue that into place. Now you can skip this step if you'd like, but I just thought it would finish the look. And of course, use some of your whitewash to finish it off as needed. And then it's ready for display. So I had found this picture frame at a garage sale quite a while ago now. I'm going to take it all apart. I, need, I don't need the glass. And in time, I actually do end up removing that back panel that's got the stand, but I'll show you that later. Next, I'm removing this embellishment. I didn't need it for this project, but I'm going to put it aside and save it for something else. So as you can see, there's a little bit of damage and some glue left over from that embellishment. So I'm just trying to get all of that off using a sanding, a sanding block, as well as a spatula to scrape it off. And there's still a little bit of damage, but I'm going to just work with it. Next, I'm using some gesso. Gesso is a primer that artists use. I'm going to use it to fill in those little holes and I'm going to use it to coat the entire frame of this piece. If I were to just directly paint onto it, I have a good chance of the paint all chipping off. So I like to always prime my surfaces first before I use some craft paint. Here I'm just using that spatula to make sure it's all nice and smooth across those little divots. And then I'm going to continue to give my frame a coat of the gesso and then you'll want to allow it to dry well. The type of gesso I'm using, I got it from my local dollar store called Dollarama. It's a really nice, smooth consistency. Another really nice, smooth consistency brand is uh, Artist Loft from Michaels. All right, now everything is dry. I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm just going to sand down where I had those extra little divots or extra little bit of gesso. And then I'm going to clean off the excess. And now I'm going over it again because there's still a little bit of texture showing through and I really didn't want that if I could avoid it. Allowed it to dry well again. And now I'm going over the entire surface with the sanding block because I did notice that there was a bit more texture um, around the rest of the frame. So I just wanted to knock that back and then use my rag to just clean it all up from the dust. And now I'm going to be using this leaf green acrylic craft paint and I'm going to be giving this frame two coats of this paint. Of course, feel free to use any paint color that you'd like, but I don't know, I'm really enjoying these green colors lately. I just think it's just so fresh and renewing. So I'm just going to continue to paint the entire frame as well as the inside edge and the outside edge. Once the first coat is dry, I'm just going in with a second coat. You can see how blotchy that first coat is, but trust me, if I didn't use that gesso, I just know that that paint would not have adhered very well at all. So the second coat is all nice and dry. Now I'm going in and I'm going to be using some cream colored paint. It's like an off white color, but first I decided to remove that back panel. So I just used my craft night and cut that off. I'm going to be setting that aside because I'll be using that here in a bit. And now I'm just going over the entire piece with my white paint. So I am actually working quite quickly here. I am trying to give the entire piece a coat of the white paint quickly as I want to create a texture to this by using a technique I actually haven't used in a really long time. And that is by adding plastic wrap to the surface of your wet paint and then pulling up. You can see how much texture is left behind. So a person could add some like glazing medium to your craft paint and that will give you more time to work with the paint and create this look but i'm actually quite happy with how it is i didn't want to lift up too much of the paint but just enough so that we've got some definition and you can see the green paint coming through so i still needed to finish off that inside lip so i decided to use some white paint and i didn't bother adding that technique with the plastic wrap to that inner portion and same with the outside of the frame i didn't bother to use that technique there either 
So I'm really happy with how that looks, but I just wanted to bring out a little bit more green around the edges and some distressing. So I'm using some sandpaper just around the edge and on the inner portion of the frame. That will just help the green to just show up a little bit more and just bring some definition to the frame. I'm just again wiping it off with a rag and next I'm using this matte varnish from Deco Art. I really love to use this. It helps to seal your projects up so the paint doesn't flake off but it also helps to pop all those different textures and colors that you have used and created. I just really like how it just it just really does make a piece come alive. All right, so I'm gonna allow that to dry. And while that's drying, I am going to be covering up this back panel using this green cardstock that matched my craft paint, the green craft paint. Just going to cut it out just like you saw me do there with my craft knife. And then this is where I decided I'm not gonna use this stand. So I just kind of worked and wiggled at it until it popped off. And there was a little bit of some damage, but I just used some scissors just to push all the pieces back into place and that worked fine for me. So now I'm going to at attach the cardstock to the back of this panel, of course, using my tacky glue and my a piece of plastic here, or this plastic card. So just spread that out and then put my cardstock into place. And I always like to add some weight on this while it dries. All right, so it's all nice and dry. And for a fun touch, I decided to use this beautiful lace I had picked up from the thrift store. I thought it would just be so cool to add some really interesting texture to the back of this green paper. So again, I'm gonna be using my tacky glue to spread it out. I am using a little bit more since I'm using this lace and I just spread it out. Then I just put my lace into place and gently pat it into place and then I'm allowing it to set. Now it's set. I'm gonna trim off all the excess and you'll see how the green just pops from in behind this lace and that was due to the glue. It's just such a cool effect. So my frame is all nice and dry. I'm going to put my little panel into place. I think it is so pretty. And there was actually some little clamps on the back side. So once I put this panel into place, I just clamp that all closed. And now for a fun little touch, I have these faux fern leaves that I had in my stash. I'm just going to take them apart and cut them down to size, trimming off any extra little bits so it will fit within my frame. I decided to use two little fern fronds for this piece, but some little flowers would be really pretty in here as well. So I'm just using some hot glue to put them into place once I have my placement figured out. And then I felt like it was still a little plain. So I decided to go into my stash of string and I grabbed some beautiful baker's twine. I actually had some that matched this piece nicely. I had picked it up from Michael's a couple years ago in the clearance section. So I'm just going to make a basic loopy bow and I'm also adding some extra little tails to this as well. I just like that look. And then I'm just taking one extra piece and I'm just going to tie that in the middle and that will tie everything together. I'm just using a basic knot. So once your bow is all put together, you can just use a little dab of some hot glue to put that into place and it's ready to put on display in your home. And I think this is just gorgeous. So this is a fun little frame set that I picked up from the thrift store a couple of years ago and I wasn't always sure what I wanted to do with it. but. I've discovered something really cool to do with this piece. So I needed to take it all apart and then I dug out my gesso and I'm going to give this entire piece a coat with my gesso. 
Now at this point, I should have sanded it down a bit because the surface was quite slick, but I may do with what I did. And at this point, I also should have taken those hinges off, but again, I didn't. I do that later on. I was getting some gesso on those hinges. I thought I could avoid it, but I didn't. So if you do a piece like this, definitely take those hinges off. So here you can see, I'm like, okay, those hinges have got to come off because I'm getting them messy. So I'm just, again, just using my uh, screwdriver to remove those and make sure you set those aside so you don't lose them because those screws are actually quite small. So thankfully the gesso came off really easily off of those pieces. Now I'm just taking the gesso and just filling in where I missed those spots where the hinges were. Next, I'm using this warm white. It's actually more of a rich cream color. And I'm going to give all three of my frames two coats of this paint. Don't forget to do the back side of your frame as well as the inner portion. And then once you have that painted, make sure you allow it to dry well, and then you can go in with your second coat of paint and allow that to dry well too. So my frames are all nice and dry. Next, I decided to add some distressing. So I'm using a sanding block to, dis to start, but I found that it didn't take enough of the paint off. I was actually quite impressed with how well that gesso was working. I also wanted to get some of the paint off on the inner portions and it was a bit too small for my sanding block. So here I am using a piece of some fine sandpaper and it's doing a much better job to do the distressing that I was wanting. You can see how it's just taking some of those chunks of paint right off. You wanna clean them up and then again, I'm using my matte varnish from Deco Art to give this entire, all three of the pieces, a coat of this. And again, that will just help the distressing to pop as well as protect the paint that you had used to prevent it from chipping any further. Of course, if you want that look, then you don't have to do this step. Another thing you could use is some clear spray paint if that's what you have. So I want to be putting the panels back into place, but of course they're kind of ugly the way they are. So I'm using some of that scrapbook paper that we had already used, and I'm going to cut some pieces to fit perfectly on the backs of those panels. Again, using a flat surface and your utility knife. I really like how that looks. So I cut all of those pieces out. And again, using my tacky glue, I'm going to add some glue to the back of the panels. And I was actually kind of surprised how much of that panel was absorbing the glue. So I did have to go back in there twice to add some glue to make sure that there was enough for the paper to adhere to. So I spread it all out push the paper into place. And I did this for all three of my panels. And then I put them upside down on a flat surface and put some weight on top to allow them to dry. Once dry, I discovered that there was just a little bit of a lip at the bottom and that lip actually fits inside of the frame on the back. I needed to trim off the paper that I had there. I did that to all three and then that little piece slipped into our frame really well and I was able to put all the panels back in place without a problem. So just have to kind of remember which way those panels went in as well. Next, I am going to take a wire to clear out all of those holes for the screws where our hinges were gonna go because we need to put those hinges back into place at this point. I've got them all cleaned out and now it's time to put the hinges back. So I got a little confused here. So I had to go back and have a look at my picture to see how these hinges were on. So once I got that figured out, I am now putting those back into place. Of course, if you don't like the black color, you can change these hinges up and use a paint that was friendly for metal. Um, I actually didn't mind the black look, so I just left these as is.
So for me, I found that it was easier to add the hinges to one panel first and then attach the other side of the hinges to the other panel. I'll do the same for the other set as well. So our frames are all back together. Now, I'm loving how this looks, but I was inspired by what I had seen on Pinterest and that's specimen cards. If you have not seen what specimen cards are, I definitely recommend that you look it up. They're like little observation cards for botanicals or other natural elements. And I just always thought that they looked so cool. So I wanted to create a similar look in this frame. As you just saw me do, I used a pencil just to outline the inner portion of our frames. You can see how that looks there. That way here I knew exactly where I wanted to place all my elements. I'm adding these cute little botanical papers that I had got from a store called uh, Stationery Pal. I'll have them linked down below. So I'm just going to uh, just measure out how big my squares are and that way here I know how big I need each little paper and I also wanted to make sure that I was going to get the image in the center so this is definitely an important step so of course it depends on the size of your frame that you're using that will determine the size that you need to cut your pieces down so I'm just going to use uh, some scissors to trim off the excess and it ended up being a perfect fit of course you had would have seen me before determine where I wanted to place all these images on my back panels as well. So I'm just going to continue to measure the size of each panel that I'm going to be having one of these images placed in. So I'm actually really curious. I would love to know what you would put in a picture frame like this because it's a pretty unique piece. If I think that your idea really stands out, I am going to pin your comment to the top of the comment feed. Don't forget to check out everybody's comment as I'm sure there's lots of unique ideas. So at this point, I am going to just start to place my other decorative elements into place just so I can figure out my placement. I've got my birch bark and then I also have my little botanicals. I also have some branches with pine cones and lichen on it. I have some moss. I have some dried florals as well as of some other natural elements that I had in my stash. So again, I'm just figuring out my placement and then usually what I like to do is actually take a picture of my placement so I know exactly where I need to put everything back. So once I'm happy with how everything looks, I can move things around still at this point and I'm just going to see what it looks like in my frame. I really like how that looks. I think it looks so cool. So before I move on, I'm just going to glue my papers into place first. Uh, you need to do this step first before you move on because we need to be able to put these panels back in. But I also needed to glue these papers back in first before the panels went inside. So just using a glue stick and smoothing them out. I also did the same with the piece of bark except I adhered that using some hot glue and then press it till the glue sets. So once my paper and my birch bark in place, I'm now removing those other elements. I'm trying to keep them in somewhat of an order when I remove them. And now I'm going to put my panels back into place. So I decided to do it this way because I figured it would allow me to get my 3D elements in place a little bit more easily. I'm using some hot glue to ad adhere all of them. I'm using some moss just to break up the color a little bit because some of my pieces were light like this piece of oh this is a piece of porcelain that I found on the beach one year when I was looking for some beach glass. This piece is just a little branch with some lichen on it that I had foraged. I thought it would just be a fun little touch to add some foraged items as well. It's such a fun piece. This is a really neat idea to do with kids as well, especially those who love to collect all those natural treasures. So next I am adding this piece of antler. This is some deer antler that I had. 
uh, on my family's homestead, the deer naturally dropped their antlers and my husband tried to make some buttons out of it. So he had one little extra piece and I thought this would be a fun little added touch. This is just another branch that's got a cute little pine cone on it. I thought it would be a nice addition as well. These are some flowers that I had grown in my front flower bed. They're called Pearly Everlasting. And again, I thought that it would be a really pretty added touch to this piece. And now I'm adding just a bit more moss again, and I'm adding this beautiful polished rock that I had in my stash. I thought again, it would be a really fun piece to add. And I think it looks amazing. This is my absolute favorite of the day. If you're looking for some more unique DIY home decor inspiration, then check out this playlist here to the right. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.